Hello, hello, hello. How are you guys doing this evening? It is currently 11.52 p.m. On this beautiful Sunday evening going into Monday. It's currently 66 degrees outside. As I drive you into Monday morning, or if you're listening to this on Monday, the Tuesday morning, how are you guys doing this evening? I have had a very relaxing day today. I'm gonna open my, I bought a LaCroix with me today. I'm gonna open my, this is the one that Michael's wife likes. Guava San Paolo. I'm gonna open that right now. I was gonna bring a Diet Coke, but I was like, you know what? I drank a bunch of coffee earlier. I should probably have a LaCroix. LaCroix. <laughs> I just kind of relaxed all day today. Got up and Alex did this candle making thing. And then um, I met him for brunch. So we went and had brunch. <clears throat> Alex had a cup of tomato bisque soup. Is it called tomato? Tomato artichoke with croutons. And a cup of coffee and the Cuban, bre Cuban breakfast. If you haven't heard me talk about 5,000 times before, it's rice and egg and avocado and be black beans. And then he puts like sriracha on it. And then I got, I wasn't super hungry today. I got a gluten-free waffle. I didn't get any potatoes and I got a small orange juice. I didn't get any fruit, any salad, anything on the side. And I didn't even finish my um, waffle. I just really wasn't that hungry. Anyway, it couldn't have anything to do with the candy bar that I ate this morning because I bought two candy bars last night when I was with Tanya Jean and um, didn't eat them. And so this morning, I knew if my car when Alex left, and so I came back inside and before I went upstairs, went to bed, I sat there and ate one of the candy bars because I was wanting to eat it so bad. Last night, <clears throat> I went home. What time did I vlog last night? I don't even remember. Um, and I, well, Alex had just gotten home from that thing. He got home about a, half an hour before me. So I, um, <clears throat> cause he had heated up some pizza. And so then I heated up some pasta and a, my piece, I didn't heat up my piece of pizza cause I like cold pizza. A little unknown fact, I like cold pizza. And um, I ordered <clears throat> National Entertainer of the Year from, 2019, I think it is, the year that Buffet won, because the newest one doesn't come out until August 15th, so I can't order it yet. So I sat outside, because Alex was going upstairs to go to bed, I sat on the front porch, and I watched all three hours of the final night, <laughs> and I had a blast. I had such a blast, I was like shazamming songs, I downloaded like... A Todd Call song. I downloaded like three new Whitney Houston songs, a Cher song, a Lord song, because they were like in all of these different productions from like the formers doing these songs to it being part of talent. Um, a Leona Lewis song. It was kind of very spiritual. It's called like Footprints or something. I liked it. Anyway, and I watched the whole pageant. And it was good. There were two Reba McIntyre uh, impersonators in the top ten. I like Reba McIntyre. Like, I like Reba McIntyre as a person. So, if you don't know, like, you haven't heard me talk about this a bunch on here. I'm, like, a super fan of country music. Like, I love country music. And I didn't growing up. My dad loved what my mom would have called country western music. Like, he listened to, like, uh, Willie Nelson, Waylon Jennings, Merle Hag... Did he listen to Merle Haggard? I feel like he did. That kind of stuff. Um, which, now I love all of that. But when I was... And I love Willie Nelson. Like, I'm a huge Willie Nelson fan. But when I was growing up, I didn't like it. There was... I only liked Tom T. Hall, because I thought the songs were funny. And my dad would... There was, like, this one called Sneaky Snake or something like that. Do you guys remember that one? And um, the song, I like beer. <laughs> my dad and I used to sing that song when I was like five. <laughs> Interestingly enough, I turned into being an alcoholic. But anyway, um, 
so we used to sing the Tom T. Hall songs because I liked those songs. Um, but my dad always listened to country music when I was growing up. Country music or Julio Iglesias. And then when Julio Iglesias and Willie Nelson did an album, album together, my dad like fell in love with that album. So, but that was, so I, so today I love country music and I listen to so many people. And I like Reba McIntyre, and there's some of her songs I like. I love the song A Promise Too Late, One, Pro One Promise Too Late. It's like probably my favorite Reba McIntyre song. I'm not a fan of the song Fancy, no offense, but I feel like I've heard it nine million times, and I feel like I've seen 6,000 drag queens do that song. And one of them did it in the pageant. I just feel like, well, I know like everybody expects that song, like if you're a drag queen, but it's like, I don't know. I like Reba McIntyre and I think she's very real, but I think she can borderline on a kind of like a little corny, cheesy sometimes. Just my two cents. So, uh, and I never watched the show Reba back in the day. <laughs> but I do like her. I like all the divas of country music. Like I love, you know, Tammy Wynette, Dolly Parton, Loretta Lynn, um, Reba McIntyre. I even like a lot of the new new ones too. You know, Kelly Clarkson, she's crossover, I guess, but I liked her country stuff. Um, I was actually just listening to her do that song, Never Enough, from The Greatest Showman, which I've never seen that movie. Um, but I love that song. And um, I love her rendition of it. Somebody did, so anyway, I watched that pageant. And then of course it wasn't late enough because it was only five o'clock in the morning. So I went back to the year before that and, and rented that. It's only $12.99 to rent each of these pageants. And you get a rent, like if I had a whole weekend to watch it, I would probably do it differently. But you, you get a Friday night, two parts to the preliminary, Saturday night, two parts of the preliminary, and Sunday night, two parts of the final night, where they do the top 10, and then top 10 do talent and evening gown and stuff like that. Um, but I just watched the final nights of these pageants, and the year before is when Danielle Hunter won, and I just, that's where I finished. I actually took it upstairs for Alex to watch, although he has absolutely no interest in it whatsoever. If you guys can find the Daniel Hunter National Entertainer of the Year winning talent. I think it's 2018. It is hilarious, okay? So Daniel Hunter does uh, Dolly Parton. She's done her for a long time. I think she won Miss Continental with Daniel with Dolly Parton too. I might be wrong though. But um, this was so good. So she did like three songs. She did some uh, Rocky Top um, and then Rocky Top, oh Rocky Top, <laughs> Rocky Top Tennessee. Do you guys remember that song? There was this Mexican restaurant that <clears throat> Whenever my dad would go out of town when I was a kid, like after my parents got separated, there was this nurse that he had, um, that he, she would come and stay with me, like babysit me on the weekends when it was like my dad's weekend and he had to go somewhere. And so she would walk, like, you know, she would come babysit me and stay overnight. And um, she was like a really close family friend. I loved her. And she was so fun. She like babysat like all the kids on our street and stuff. And, um, so we would always go to this restaurant called Pepe's and it was actually a Castleton. It's now where the new Starbucks is if you live in Indianapolis. But anyway, like the building is gone. It's where like Qdoba and Starbucks is at Castleton. But anyway, she and I would go there and then we would come home and watch a movie like Romance in the Stone, which is so funny because I just bought that movie tonight on iTunes because I love that movie, Romance in the Stone, and it's $4.99 right now to buy on iTunes. And even though I have the VCR version of it um, in my office, I bought it because I was like, then I can watch it whenever I want. Uh, I've been buying movies on iTunes that I really, really like whenever I see them go on sale. Um, because in that way, like, I just have them, and if I want to watch them, I can watch them, you know? And I don't have to, like, look for them and stuff like that. Plus, I don't know how... Some of these movies might go away, like Cocoon did. But anyway, so when we would go there, they had these two guys that would come around, and they would play, like, guitar. And, um... We would always request Rocky Top, and you could, like, they would ask us to request songs, and then... So we would request Rocky Top. I should call her and tell her this. Rocky Top and um, the Chicken Song. You know, I hadn't seen her in years and years and years. And 
she's like in administrative nursing now and stuff like that. And I was leaving the day before my mom passed away from the hospital and I hadn't seen her. I mean, like, I don't even know the last time I'd seen her before then, probably when I was like in junior high or high school or something like that. And, um, she looked exactly the same and she was walking out of, um, she was walking into the parking garage and I was like, oh my God. And I said to her, I said her name and she turned around and she was like, Pete, because my dad, like everybody that like associates with my dad calls me Pete. And so she was like, Pete? And I was like, yeah. And she was like, oh my God. She was like, it's so good to see you. And I was like, thanks. She gave me a big hug and aw, she's a sweetheart. So anyway, got up today. So I stayed up super late last night watching those drag pageants. I had so much fun. It reminded me of back in the day going to the pageants. I haven't been to a drag pageant in forever and I miss it. I want to go. Um, so I stayed up super late watching those. I didn't finish. Oh, oh this is what I was going to say. The Daniel Hunter um, who I keep on wanting to call Daniel Steele, like the writer. But the Daniel Hunter winning talent was Dolly Parton, and she did three songs. She did Rocky Top into 9 to 5. It was like a live concert, like, recording. And then it went into... She's like, I, get, I bet you'll know this song, too. And it was like, I will always love you, you know? But then, like, at the part where she would go, and, uh... It would stop, and it would go into Whitney Houston's version. And a Whitney, a Whitney Houston, like, impersonator would walk out... And she'd get real frustrated because, you know, like, Whitney Houston sang that song, too. I, I know you guys know. And so she would shoot him. <laughs> and three of them came out. And one of them was Tasha Long, who had... I think one of them was Mocha Montrese, and the other one was uh, Tasha Long, who had both won Entertainer of the Year and Miss Continental. And they came out as Whitney Houston. It was really funny. Um, but anyway, was it three or four? It was, it was four of them came out total. It was funny. So I was showing it to Alex. He was like, real impressed. <laughs> he didn't really care. He was like, why are you showing me this? And I'm like, because, because. So anyway, okay, so what did I do today? So I, really a whole lot of nothing. So I went to brunch. And then after brunch, Alex went to Nordstrom. And since we drove separate, he was gonna go over there and I didn't feel like doing any shopping today. I was like so casual now and just like relaxed. So I, oh, I went to go see Tanya at the kennel. Cause she was open between three and four today. So I went over to see Tanya at the kennel and um, hung out with her for just a little bit. And then, um, after that, I came home. I was actually gonna film some videos today, but I was like sitting there talking to Tanya. We were sitting outside, cause she's got like this couch, like this um, patio couch, you know, like on her front porch of her uh, kennel. And we were sitting out there and it was such a beautiful day. And she just kept on saying, it's such a beautiful day. And I was like, yeah, I know, I've got these videos I wanna make and whatever. She's like, why don't you just take the day off? She was like, I feel like you've been posting videos every single day. I was like, maybe I will take the day off today. I just always feel like when I don't make videos and I have like the opportunity to, I just feel like useless. I feel like, and I already had my vlog done too, like today. Like I, I uploaded it all last night because I was watching that drag pageant. And so it was like uploaded and ready to go last night. All I had to do was like um, finalize the stuff on it today. And do you know that that <laughs> vlog sat there until like half an hour ago before I left the house? Just sat there and I didn't upload it. I, I kept on forgetting to upload it. So, I came home. Alex slept most of the day. He was like, I think I'm going to go to... It was so funny because I just said on here that back in the day, Alex would go to bed like one day, you know, every two weeks. And he would sleep like 15 hours. And he hasn't done that in forever. And it was literally like not even 5 o'clock yet. And he was like, I think I'm going to go to bed for the night. And I said, are you serious? And he's like, yeah, I'm really tired. He was like, I've been going and going and going for like two weeks straight. And I said, okay, babe. And he's like, what are you going to do? And I was like, well, um, I said, I've got a couple cameos I want to do. So I'm going to do those. And I said, and then I'm going to call some people. Because I called and talked to my friend Valerie for a long time today. And I 
said I might sit outside and read. I might finish this drag pageant. I said, I don't know. Oh, I also finished um, A Good Day for Chardonnay, the Dorinda Jones book. It was fantastic. I gave it a five out of five stars. And I'm star I started today The Lost Girls, which is the true crime book for um, July. And our live stream is a week from today. So I've got a week to finish it. <laughs> But my goal is that I have to read at least two books a week to meet my goal by the end of the year. So it won't take me that long. I think it's like, I think it's like 12, it's 11 and a half hours. And I started listening to it today to see how like fast I could listen to it. And I've, I've actually listened to another book narrated by this guy because John Glatt, who wrote this book, he also wrote the book for, um, the Chris and Shanann Watts case. Chris Watts case. Um, Shanann Watts was his wife that he killed and his two daughters too. So he wrote the book and I think it was the same narrator. Um, and the guy is like, he speaks really slow so I can listen to it really fast. I can listen really fast to things. Um, so I was like, I had it on two times five speed and I was like, this will be fine. Um, so that's like four, four and a half hours, four and a half hours, I think, of a book. I'll have that done by like Wednesday. And um, if I really listen to it, it depends on how much I like it. I'm actually really interested in reading this book because I don't know anything about this case. It's about the women that were abducted in Ohio. I don't really know anything about it. I mean, I know I saw some of the news footage and I remember Tani and I watched some of it like on Nancy Grace, but other than that, I don't really know a whole lot about it. Um, so yeah, so that's the July book. And then, um, do, 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 um, what is that song I was just humming? I feel like it's like it's a kid's song from when you're growing up. nephew Sebastian knows all those little songs it's so funny Curly does used to know them all too you know like the Itsy Bitsy Spider and all that kind of stuff we used to do this one in elementary or kindergarten when I was in kindergarten called Little Bunny Fifth Fifth I Don't Wanna See you. how do I remember that all these years later isn't that crazy who stole the cookie from the cookie jar was it you was it me couldn't be then who <laughs> Peter stole the cookie from the cookie jar. What? And it was never me. Nobody ever said my name. <laughs> that was fine. I didn't want to steal a cookie from the cookie jar anyway. Do you remember all of that? So I just kind of laid around all day today. It was nice. I took a nap. Oh, <sighs> Alex was asleep, so I laid down from like eight fifteen to like ten. And then I got up and I watched the talent portion of the pageant and I ate some chips and hummus. It's like these Ritz cracker chip thing, Ritz crackers that I eat with hummus. I had that <laughs> and the other candy bar. There was my great dinner tonight. And um, yeah, and then I went upstairs and I was talking to Alex and I was showing him that talent, of which, like I said, he could care less about. I'm like, you love watching RuPaul's Drag Race. This is no different. This is just a drag pageant. He's like, it's totally different. I'm like, how is it different? I said, quite frankly, like, the, the talent is better in drag pageants than it is on RuPaul's Drag Race, if you want to know the truth. But, um... So, I still, I have them for 48 hours. So when you rent them, you get them for 48 hours on this website, which is cool. So I've got two more days to watch stuff on there. And then, but I don't think that's bad, do you? Eight hours for $12.99? I think that's pretty good. And I feel like that's all we did. I talked to my neighbor for a while. She was telling me that she got called because she got nominated for the HOA board. This is so funny to me that I have been like 
associated with the neighborhood since 1994 and I've lived there for 13 years and I have never once been nominated for the board asked to come to a board I mean not that I want to or anything you know but she's been there a year and she gets nominated don't you think that's funny I told her I said because she's like I don't want to be part of the board and I said why not and she's like well she was like I mean, when I talk about the HOA board, you guys, like, I'm only giving you, like, a sprinkling of, like, what really goes on. Like, it is very political in our neighborhood. And there's, like, only 50 or 60 condos, right? And when I say political, I mean political, like, <laughs> I don't even really know how to explain it. It's kind of funny. It's like, well, I mean, I don't know why this is it. For me to share it's not that big of a deal but one of our neighbors wants a patio a sunroom okay well she presented it to the board and the board said no you can't do any additions onto your house now when my mom lived there all you had to do was get the approval of people on either side of you because of construction stuff but this became this huge deal well, she read the bylaws. She read like every word of the bylaws. I love this woman. She read like every word of the bylaws and it doesn't, the condo bylaws, HOA bylaws, it doesn't say anything in there about not being able to add on an addition to your home as long as you stay in the square footage of your property, okay? Because there's land that goes around our condos that we don't own and, but like our condo property only goes out so far, like our property line. You guys know what that means if you own property, okay? So she's like, well, I, we already, where, we just want to move it out, like where the the do, uh, the deck was. We want to take the deck out and put in, a, what do they call it, a three three quarter, what are the everybody's calling it, a seasonal room or three part of the three month, I don't know what they call it. Um, it's not like a sunroom that like you couldn't sit out in the cold. It's like, and it's not like a room room to your house. It's like three out of the four seasons or something like that. Like you couldn't sit out there in winter, but you could sit out there in the fall. Do you know what I'm talking about? They call it something anyway. I've heard it now a million times because every one of my neighbors is all up in arms about this. Okay. So she reads these bylaws and the bylaws don't have anything in there that say anything about this, right? So she takes it to the board, of which there are five voting members on the board. Like, this is where it becomes very serious, okay? And the board said, well, we need to, like, we really need to understand, like, how this is going to affect your neighbors, and so we need to do some looking into this and whatever. Okay, so on her own, I don't know why she didn't ask me. I told her, I said, I don't know why you didn't ask me. I would have written you a letter. She went and had, like, all of the neighbors around us write a letter, okay? And so she had all these, she had like five letters in support of her building this patio. Now you have to understand this woman that I'm talking about, she gets stuff done, okay? She's not just like some old lady over there that's like, oh, I want a patio, it'd be so nice. No, she's like, I'm getting my patio. Like she's like, I mean, she'll sit in her driveway and say to me, you watch, I'm getting my patio. I'm gonna get my sunroom, I'm getting it. But she calls it something else, I can't remember what she calls it. But anyway, so, <clears throat> And I'm always out there, and she's out there because she's real into her yard work. She's a master gardener and all this kind of stuff. So whenever I see her, because she's like literally right across the street. We're right across the street from each other. So I'm always like, hey. And I like, so she and I talk. And whenever I start talking to her, she'll be like, hey, let me tell you what the board did now. So she's always filling me in on all this stuff. So she contacted an attorney. And the attorney told her that she could they couldn't say no to her about this room if it's not in the bylaws. So she said that you have to have the bylaws changed. Like she was able, like they got, they were able to have 90 days to change the bylaws, okay? To rewrite the bylaws. But first they had to vote on having the bylaws changed, of which they, of course, got that voted in, but they had to wait until the next meeting because they couldn't do an emergency meeting on this. So that was 30 days they lost and they had 60 days to rewrite these bylaws of which they had to rewrite them from the beginning to the very end. Like they couldn't just go in there and just rewrite that part, okay? So they had to rewrite the entire bylaws and then we all had to approve it, which it didn't get approved, okay? So now it's gone basically back to where it is because everybody's like, no, we're not changing these bylaws, okay, that you are 
screwing this on because it's the same five people that have been on the board this for the last 15 years and they all have their patios and, and the reason why like it like I care is because if she gets her patio at some point then if we want to get a pat I mean I don't know I might want a sunroom at some point I think that might be real nice you know to have a sunroom out there it would expand the um I think it would, you know, we're not going to sell our condo, but it would, like, raise the property value. <clears throat> and, you know, if we had a room that we could, I wouldn't get a, I wouldn't get a sunroom. I would get a, a room room that you could use, you know, uh, <clears throat> uh, every season. Um, and then I would get a sliding glass door out there that went to a patio, you know. Look, you could have a little patio to the side still in your area so that you could let the dogs out and stuff like that. All season room. That's what they call it. All season room. Okay. So, but they, I feel like they still call it something else. So, now, she's been waiting. They made her wait two months. Because out of the five people, the four have voted on it, and it's two-two. Two in favor of her patio and two against her patio. Okay? Well, the fifth guy hasn't been showing up to meetings. Because he doesn't care. It's not because of anything else. It's just he doesn't want to be on the board anymore. And he hasn't resigned. As of like two weeks ago. So then I get this email. Because she was telling me. What happened? At the, there was something else in, in the neighborhood. They were. They always send out the, all these. Well what happens is the HOA board takes this stuff. And then takes it to the management company. And then the management company sends these emails out. So the management company sent us this email. We all had to read it and whatever. But in there, I'm noticing there was like this attachment and it was like very important. My concerns about patio or something like that. And I was like, what is this? And it was this three-paged, single spice, single spiced, single spaced letter that had like outlined points and everything to it on this one guy on the board why he was so against the patio being built of this woman. Three pages, okay, that this man had time to write, these three pages. And it was ridiculous stuff, too. Um, so anyway, I kind of feel bad for her, in all honesty. Well, now... And I joked with her, because I told her, I said, you should run for the, the board. And she's like, don't think I haven't thought about it, but you have to get nominated. And I said, well, how do you get nominated? And she said, well, either somebody from the board nominates you, or you have to have, I can't remember how many people. I think there's like so many people have to nominate you or something, right? So she didn't get nominated, but my neighbor right next door to me, who they're friendly to, but my neighbor right next door to me is so hilarious and like retired and she's like 60 and like they wanted a patio and they didn't get approved for their patio. So instead she bought um, like a VW convertible, uh, a convertible beetle, you know, what are those little bugs or whatever they're called last year and she loves it. She's like, hey, I'm just as happy with my car as I am this. I mean, they are literally like the epitome of we want no drama. <laughs> so she was telling me today, she was laughing so hard. She said, you know, I got called and they told me that I had been nominated for the board. And um, she said, I feel so bad. She goes, because this woman that called me, she's like real serious about it. And she said, and I started laughing like immediately. And she said, and then I kind of collected myself and I was like, oh, you know, I really appreciate it and everything. I'm flattered, but you know, I'm just not interested. And so anyway, she said the woman acted like she'd never been told no before about like an appointment to the board. But I said, you know what I think? As I said, I think it's an agenda. And she goes, what do you mean? And I said, I think she got like three people to nominate you or somebody from the board to nominate you because she knows that you'll vote in her patio. She goes, you know what? That is so funny that you said that. She goes, I hadn't thought about that. And I was like, oh, this is what I mean by like our neighborhood is political. And everybody talks about this stuff. I mean, you walk out to get your mail and everybody is talking about it. I kind of eat it up in all honesty. I love it. Because it never is involving us. I mean, we're never like a focal point of any of this drama. So, I mean, it's not like it affects us in any kind of way. But... I love it. It's kind of fun. So anyway, I ate too much hummus and chips. 
So I was talking to her today, and we were talking about books. She was telling me about some book that she read. The camera had stopped, and I didn't even know it, and here I was talking. So anyway, I was talking about my neighbors. I don't know how much of it got recorded and how much of it didn't, but I was talking about my neighbors and how they moved here um, from St. Louis, and really, we love them. They're absolutely fantastic, and just so cool and just laid back. But anyway, they moved here because their daughter lives here and is married and has, at the time that she moved here, because she retired and then her husband retired a year after she did. So she lived here and then he would come like every other weekend or every weekend or something, I can't remember. And now he lives here. He moved here after he retired. And she just moved here first. And the reason that she moved here was because they had had their first grandbaby. And so instead of putting the grandbaby into daycare, she, and now she and her husband, they watched their grandkids like five days a week. Um, Cause now she has a second grandchild, two grand, two grandsons. And yeah, two grandsons. And um, what was I telling that story? I totally just lost my train of thought. Well, I had it when I was... Oh, I know what I was saying. So anyway, they were going to Mackinac Island last year, which I used to go to when I was a little kid. One time, my I was with my dad and my mom was when they were still married, um, and we stayed at the Grand Hotel there. And I loved it, I fell in love with it. I feel like I went one other time, but I could be wrong. Anyway, um, if you've never seen the movie Somewhere in Time with Christopher Reeve and Jane Seymour, I want to watch that this summer. I should watch it this summer. It's about time travel. And he is like an actor, and this old woman comes up to him, and she says, come back to me. And he finds out that she was this actress, and so he goes, and it's like this whole thing about time travel, and he travels back in time, and they meet, and they fall in love back in time, and all this kind of stuff. And the whole thing takes place at the Grand Hotel on Mackinac Island, which is like this really famous hotel. Like, I remember when we went there, like, we had to dress up to go to dinner and stuff like that, like suit and tie. Do you know so weird? Like, when I was growing up, I can remember there were, like, a lot of restaurants that you couldn't get into if you didn't have a jacket. And they would keep a jacket by the door. Do you remember this? Like, they would keep jackets, like, sports coats at the entrance of the restaurant and then, like, in a like, coat check. And then if you didn't have a sport coat on, they would offer you a sport coat to wear to go in. But, you like, you couldn't wear jeans. And you, if you had, just, like, khakis and a polo shirt, they would say, we have a sport coat for you. Do you remember that? Like, that is the weirdest thing. Anyway... So I told them they should watch this movie. Oh my God, she will not let me live it down to this day. She said it was so cheesy. She's like, it was so bad. It was so cheesy. I think it's actually a Richard Matheson novel. I don't know how I know that, but I feel like I looked it up one time. My other neighbors, my other side, Laura, she's like stayed to herself the entire summer. She had like a beautiful job with her pad, her back deck. It's like she's got tomato plants back there and she's got all kinds of plants on her patio. It's gorgeous. And, um, but I think she's been working a lot this summer. She used to sit out a lot on her back patio and just like she would watch like she would stream Game of Thrones and sit out there and watch it and stuff like that. And she and I would talk when I took the dogs out, but she's like hardly ever out there anymore. I was telling a story about one of my neighbors and I mentioned her name. So anyway, um, I was saying that like things are different this year. I don't know what it is. You know, there's just not like as many people that like walk around and there's not as many people at the pool. Well, I mean, there's people at the pool, like, with their kids and stuff like that, but it's not the same people, you know? It's not the... I don't know. Last year, I just, I saw a lot of the same people, you know, every day, and I loved that. Um, it kind of reminded me a little bit of when I came back into the rooms of recovery, and, um... You know, I would go to, like, the same noon meeting every day, and I would see the same people. When I went to the pool last year, it was, like, at least three days a week, I'd see some of the same people. <clears throat> I haven't gone to the pool that much this summer, which I'm kind of sad about, but I feel like I've gone enough, and I haven't seen 
some people that I used to see at least weekly over there, I haven't seen at all this summer. Like, not walking in the neighborhood, not around the neighborhood, <clears throat> not at the pool or anything, you know? It's weird. It's weird. I don't know. I still have that song stuck in my head, that Kelly Clarkson song. <laughs> Never be enough. This roundabout right here, so this is from Hamilton uh, Town Square going onto the interstate north or south. How people are not in wrecks on this roundabout on the daily is beyond me. It literally is the most confusing roundabout I have ever seen and it crosses at one point. There's a roundabout there and a roundabout there and it crosses in the middle. It is the most confusing thing. I don't know how there aren't more accidents in all honesty. I, I really, really don't. I need to take my, speaking of prime car wash, I need to take my car to go get washed. Never be enough. Never, never. I love to sing so much, and I don't think I have a horrible voice, but it's not like I have a good voice, you know? And I wish I had a good voice. I really wish I had, like, love to sing. If I had a hammer, I'd hammer in the morning. I'd hammer in the evening. Follow this way. When I was growing up, my mom she I feel like I carry a purse with me at all times to help this fanny pack. And I purchased just like two new bags recently too. So I'm really into the messenger bag thing, which I always have been, but I'm really into it more. I think I'm into it more than the fanny pack. The fanny pack, because I'm heavier, I don't wear it across my chest. I don't wear it around my waist. Like who does though, right? I did when we were in Florida, the first trip that we went down like in March, because it was just easier walking around than carrying the thing. But like, I don't wear it those ways. And so the messenger bag, it's just like a, like a crossbody bag. It's just so much easier for me. I really like the messenger bags. But what was I gonna say? Oh, when I was growing up, my mom was such a singer, you know? She took pride that she was such a great singer. Which she was good, but she wasn't, I wouldn't say the greatest singer in the world. I'd say our singing abilities were similar. I mean, we could carry a tin, but it wasn't like we were getting, you know, casted in major auditions. So, although she would tell everybody that she had been one of the singing Hoosiers, which was like a hundred people in this choir at IU, and it was like really difficult to be in it. But anyway, <laughs> I don't know about all that. All I know is, I was in choir in elementary school, and then, did I do it in sixth grade? Sixth grade? And then I stopped, and I don't know why. I think at the time, I said that I uh, had to pick between orchestra and choir, and that I liked orchestra more. Which, I don't know, I feel like that's kind of crap in retrospect. I will say that, like, I mean, I never practiced my violin. I played violin in high school. I was always in the very back, second violin. I never practiced, I never took my violin home, ever. Um, I mean, it was so bad. I always had my friends tune my violin and stuff because I couldn't even do it. But, I will say this, the teacher that I had <laughs> for orchestra when I was in high school, we actually, we won like state championships every year that uh, I was in orchestra in high school. Isn't that crazy? I mean, I loved being in orchestra. I loved the people, like some of my closest friends, were, two of my closest friends were in orchestra with me. One played percussion and the other one was played clarinet. And they were a marching band too. And um, 
orchestra, they were in some of their own ensemble too, but Wins, I think, or something like that. But anyway, they were in orchestra with me. I loved being in orchestra, but my teacher that I had in orchestra, he was like literally a saving grace. Like he didn't ever come out and say anything about me being gay or anything like that, but he just was always a safe place for me. Like I always felt safe. And you know, he gave me an A every semester. I don't even think I deserved it. But he always, I mean, I know I didn't deserve it, but he always gave me an A. He was such a nice guy. I think he knew I felt safe there. But I had to pick. Maybe we couldn't do both, and so I picked choir over orchestra or something. I don't know. Maybe we had to pick one or the other. I don't remember. All I know is I stopped singing in choir. And, you know, I feel like my life would be so different because... When I look back on, I, I was so quiet and stuff, but like when I was in orchestra, like growing up, like element, or when I was in choir in elementary school in like sixth grade year, I was so like, I mean, I got solos. I mean, like every year I got solos. And I was like, la da 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 da. I was like, you know, sh here I am. Look at me. I'm the greatest, sh the greatest showman, you know? And, um, and kind of fearless, honestly. And I think. I wasn't afraid on that stage. I also took acting classes. I was in, like in this acting group. Um, I was in Cinderella. I was the shoemaker. And in case you don't think there is a shoemaker in Cinderella, there really is in the real play. And I was the shoemaker. And I added a part to his part where he had a uh, cane that he walked with. And my dad said that he couldn't hear anybody else's lines because I was tapping the cane so loud. <laughs> I was a character actor, see? I was in method acting, okay? I was really feeling like what it would be like if you had to have a cane because you couldn't walk. So I was loud with this cane as a shoemaker. <laughs> but anyway, I mean, I always wanted to be an actor. I always wanted to do all that stuff. I loved it, you know? I still think it's fun to entertain, you know? And um, that's why I love the fan flipping and stuff on my drama channel and being trying to come up with things that are funny to do. You know, I, I enjoy all that. And, um, I don't know. I look back at the other guys that came out after we graduated from high school and there's like, well, between like my senior and junior, like between my senior year and like the junior class behind us, there was like four to six guys that all came out and they were all good friends in high school. And then they all came out and they're all still good friends today. And they're all super, super successful. Like super successful. <clears throat> if I even told you what they did for a living, you'd be blown away. And they were all in the, the top choir in high school, which was Ambassadors, um, which was like number one show choir in Indiana for many years. Like at one point it was like, it went between Indiana or went between Carmel and North Central, but it was Carmel for many years. Like they were the number one show choir. It was like that show Glee, you know, and which is probably why I loved that show so much. But I can remember always kind of being a little jealous of them and uh, not just those guys with that whole group and the friendships that they had and you know, you know, they'd be talking about how, like, ten of them had a sleepover, like, guys and girls, and they stayed up and watched, like, musical theater movies, and, you know, and even though that wasn't, like, really my thing, like, and I, and I don't for one second regret the friends that I had. I had amazing friends, but, like, if I had two lives, you know, I wonder what that experience would be like, because I think that that's an experience, a life experience, that I really would have meshed with. I do. And I honestly think that had that been my story, I think I probably would have been the first one out of that group to come out. I was still the first one out of that group to come out. Hell, two of those people came up to me later and thanked me for coming out in high school to make it easier for them. I said I wasn't out in high school. Oh, we thought you were. You know, it's like I was still the first one out out of all of them. So I probably still would have been. And I just feel like Maybe I could have had a crush on, I mean, I did have crushes in high school, but maybe I could have had a crush that was reciprocated, you know, in high school. You know, maybe I could have had friends that, I mean, my friends loved me for me, but we didn't talk about that stuff.
as like anti all of that as I was and as resistant to all of that as I was, there was a huge part of me that really like didn't want to participate in groups, didn't ever go to a game. I never went to a game, not once. Never went to pep rallies unless we were forced to. Never went to a school dance. As much as I was that person, there was a huge part of me, I think, that I didn't recognize at the time that I recognize today that really wished that I could be that person, if that makes sense. That I could do those things. And I didn't, you know? And um, I remember years later watching a Gigi Gorgeous video. This was before she had transitioned and this is when she was in high school. She was talking about like her friends in high school and they were at some game or something and they were part of some group or I can't remember the video. I wouldn't even know where to look for to be honest with you but she said like somebody was giving her a hard time and she's like but what am I going to do not participate in school she's like you have to participate she's like you have to go to the school dances you have to go to and I thought it just to her and I think like she just seems so confident to me you know and I'm like that never seemed like an option to me to go to the school dances or be in clubs or participate and if I have social anxiety now I mean it was a hundred times worse when I was in high school it was horrible it was absolutely horrible so I don't know but I feel like I did miss out on some things you know those guys there was like four of them and they met up somewhere recently. It was somewhere kind of exotic. I can't remember. It was like... One of them does something. He's like a big deal in hotels. And when I say hotels, I mean like... Very swanky, expensive hotels. And so they all met at one. And I can't remember where it was. It was like... It was somewhere unbelievable. But anyway, like Hawaii or... Paris or something like that. But anyway, it showed a picture of the four of them. They were all like out to dinner. And I thought, actually one of them was from like the, the hotel guys. Like he was a sophomore when I was a senior. But then the other guys were like seniors. But his brother was in our class. And I was like, I didn't have any friends like that. I mean, my friends from high school and I, we don't talk that much anymore. You know, I didn't have friends like that, like guy friends. I never had guy friends like that. As I got a little bit older, I did, but not like ride or die guy friends like that, you know? I don't know. One of them I grew up with and was kind of friends with when I was in elementary school. Not good, good friends, but kind of friends. And, um, he was always really friendly to me. The other ones, they were cold as hell to me. I think they were so afraid, probably. I mean, I have to believe this to be true because I think that this is such a truism. I think they were so afraid of, like, if they were friends with me or they were nice to me, then they would get called out for being gay. Because that is a true thing. I mean, whether we want to admit it or not. Like, if you're gay and you don't want anybody to know and you hang out with somebody that's super gay, you're going to get called gay. I mean, that's just the, the facts. And when you're in high school, the worst thing that you can get called is gay. I mean, you just don't want that at all, you know? And whether that's wrong or right, I understand that. Looking back on it. But... We didn't... I don't remember any out kids when I was in high school. I don't remember any kids that were out and gay. even feel like you know what that's not true I knew one girl that was a lesbian and she came to our school and she and I became friends and then she moved to southern Indiana because we had some friends in common because one of my friends moved to southern Indiana my friend moved to Princeton and she moved this girl moved to Evansville and we kind of stayed in touch and wrote letters so she was like one but other than that like yeah Maybe it was as lonely as it felt, you know? 
<laughs> anyway, listen, I'm going to get off here now. Um, but, you know, like, Alex in college, he had, like, three gay guy friends that he's, like, still somewhat friendly with till this day. I mean, I guess I did. I have, like, you know, three friends that I'm, like, kind of close with. My one friend in Denver and then my another friend that I dated. And then we decided to be friends. And then there's a third one that I haven't talked to in years. But, you know, we hung out. We were, you know, really, really close for a long time. But then everybody moved to different places. And we just kind of, like, fell out of talking to each other and fell off of, you know, to see each other anymore. So fell off and fell out of all that. <laughs> anyway. Well, listen, I'm going to get started on this audiobook, so I'm going to get off here now. So, if nobody else has told you this today, I love you. I hope that you are rejuvenated, refreshed, and renewed for the week ahead. And refreshed, rejuvenated, and renewed, and refreshed. And I love you guys, and I'll see you tomorrow. I hope you're having a... Ma I hope, if nobody else has told you this today, I love you. I hope that you're having a magically amazing Monday and I love you and I will see you tomorrow. Bye. Love ya!